Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about walking in God's mercy. And yesterday I began to talk about the, the mercy of God with regards to time. With regards to time. And this is so important because I sense in my heart that there is a grace or the direction of mercy God wants to release upon us. And that has to do with the redemption of time, redeeming time. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our theme scripture for this month is Psalm 119 and verse 64. Psalm 119 verse 64. David speaking here says, The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. You see, no matter how much mercy is available for us to walk in, if you don't understand God's statutes, if you don't understand God's ordained principles, you won't walk in that mercy. So there is there's something you need to know, there is something you need to walk in so that you will walk in God's mercy. Jonah, right from the belly of the fish, he, 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 he made a statement. He said, those that observe lying vanity forsake their own mercy. Giving you the idea that the mercy is already there, but what takes their mind, their eyes away from the mercy is that they are observing lying vanities. So if you chase what is not real, you will turn away from your mercy, even though the mercy is there. So David is saying here that the earth is full of God's mercy. Please let us sink in your mind. The earth is full of God's mercy. Full. There is no part of this earth you get to that the mercy of God will not be available. See, as long as the Spirit of God is in a place and wherever you have air, the Spirit of God is there. Yes, any space where you have air, the Spirit of God is there. So that's to tell you that there is no place you will not find God's mercy. No place. No place. I, I'm stressing this so that your mind will wake up and you'll begin to enjoy the mercy of God even as you begin to walk in it. It's the greatest thing God has given to us. His mercy. Praise God. So we began to look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. To divide the day from the night. You know, I was telling you something yesterday. When he said to divide the day from the night, it's not saying to shift, to put a line and say this from here is day, from now is night. You know, he, the, the marginal reference in most of your Bibles will, will show you what, is, what he exactly said. And he said to divide the day and the night. So what he's saying, you know, I was explaining that to you on Monday. He, he, in the daytime, he created divisions. In the nighttime, he created divisions. And that's where um, we got the, the watches from, praying according to the watches. So that's how the, the timing is divided, according to watches. Now, even, um, even as little as seconds. And I told you, God didn't invent clock. God made time. Man invented clock. Studying the, the time that God made. And how did you how did they invent clock? They invented clock using the lights that God made. Okay. So by studying the shadow, a shadow 
have to do with light. If there is no light, you can't talk of shadow. So the light is being cast on something and it creates shadow. Okay. Now, everything God has created is he created it in light. He used light to put time to it. You see, because light and time, they are one. So when we want to talk about timing, we talk about light. So God said here, that let there be light in the firmament and let that light do something, divide time. And then he says, let them be for a sign and for seasons and for day and for night. So light differentiates seasons. See? Now, when we talk about season, I know all you can think about is rainy season, dry season, autumn, um, summer and the rest of them but it goes beyond that season even the season of things that are to happen on the earth it is all defined by light so light carries the testimony of the timing that God has ordained for things to come now I read this from the Amplified Version. I love this Amplified Version it says and God said let there be light in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and tokens of God's provident care. I love that statement. Let them be for signs and tokens of God's provident care. Meaning, let these things... Now, this is God speaking. He wasn't speaking to man. I want you to understand. He wasn't speaking to man here. He was speaking in creation. This, this, this uh, story was written by Revelation. Because nobody was there when God was doing this speaking. Nobody was hearing him and monitoring what he was saying. No, this whole story came by Revelation. So Revelation telling how God made everything that he made. So he says, it got to a point God now said, let there be light in the firmaments, and let the light divide the day and divide the night, and let them be for a sign and for seasons and for day and for night. Amplified opens it up. That's what Amplified does. Opens it up to say, let them be for signs and tokens of God's provident care. So the light carry the testimony that God has already made everything to care for you. Yes, it is his futuristic care. Now, when he said this, no man was on the earth. So now he's creating something and saying, let that thing be a token of my provident care, my futuristic care for man. You see, people suffer not because the devil is so wicked or he's so powerful, People suffer because they don't understand God's status. That's what David said. Just teach me your status. Let me know it. Because if I can, if I can just know it, then I'll walk in your mercy. I'll walk in your mercy. Everything that ought to be done in, on this earth is timed. Things have been timed. And how did God time them? He timed them with the lights that he created, the sun, the moon. The stars, he created all these things by their lights. He timed them by their lights. So the sun is not just to give you light, oh, charge your solar, solar panels and, and make you see in the daytime, warm your clothes. Beyond that, far be see, we have not we have not explored. I told you yesterday, scientists make discovery, but God's children ought to give the meaning of these things because they are the ones that can connect with the maker of these things. Scientists just discover that they are there, you see? And then they begin to study the functionality of them. But it is only God that can tell you the truth of why these things were created in the first place. So if scientists, without God assuming, have been able to harness a lot of things from the sun. How much more God's children, when they begin to come into revelation of these things? These things are there, but 
because we don't pay attention to them. And, and that's why God's children in truth have to expand into every field of study. Why? Because imagine as scientists have come this far, Imagine if God's children, now by the revelation of the Spirit of God, begin to in interrogate even the things that science has found out. Imagine the meaning that we're going to bring and how much more we will advance the world. I'm telling you the truth. Because we have the advantage of the voice of God. We have the advantage of the Spirit of God, whom Jesus has said He will guide us into all truth. Guiding us into all truths, not only for things that have to do with um, church things. The Holy Spirit's job is to guide us into... You see, he was there when God said, let, let, there, let there be light in the family. He was there, so he knows the details of everything that God said. He knows. To you, you just see, hear God say, let there be light in the family, and, and, and it was so. But the Holy Spirit will give you the names of the stars. Yes. He will give you the names of the stars. We don't trust the Holy Ghost enough. We don't pay attention to his dealings with us. All we are concerned about is, is us, him, you know, aiding our selfishness. We don't want to know him. We don't want to learn. We don't want to understand God. Meanwhile, the understanding of these things will truly help our lives. David said, teach me your status. Who, how will he teach you your stat his status without the Holy Spirit? How will he teach you? It's not a pastor that will teach you God's status. No, a pastor can just bear testimony of it. But if you want to really know and learn, it's the Holy Ghost. That's his job. That's his job. So, in, in, in the firmaments above, God has installed the light that carries the timing of everything that ought to be in on this earth. Yes. Now, you remember when Jesus was born. There were some wise men. We, we call them the wise men from the east. There were some wise men who noticed a different kind of star. Now, they call them wise men not because they are godly. When I mean godly, not because they, there's any testimony that they, they were in fellowship with God. They call them wise men because um, you remember even Pharaoh in Egypt had wise men, okay? Now, they call them wise men because these are people who are given to study. And by their study, they have been able to understand certain patterns. And, and by those patterns, they can give judgments. You know what I'm talking about. So they, so they call them wise men because by virtue of their study, they know beyond other people. It's just natural, okay? Wise men didn't mean that they were prophets. No. So these wise men were not prophets of God. They only, in their study, they noticed that there was a new star. And they realized that star was moving, so it gave it more meaning. And they knew that when this kind of star appears, it means a king has been born. Now that's to tell you that that's not the first time a star bearing kingship had appeared. Because they would not travel all that distance for something they are not sure about. So it means that whenever kings are born, there are certain stars that appear. Now, I want you to understand something here. Please get this. You know, sometimes, sometimes I've, I've received all those questions that sometimes you go too deep into certain things, you know, but because I love to teach from the foundation of things. Why? Because if you can understand the foundation, then you can, you can build on it. Okay. Yes, you can build on it. And, and this, the, the purpose of all this teaching is not just for you to Oh, ah, Pastor Tobokan, he knows some stuff. No, it's for you to understand and then you make advancement with it. How, how far you want to go with this thing? I'm actually just giving you raw materials. But how far you would go, not in your own mind dabbling into things. No, you going back to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, this thing I'm hearing today, what exactly 
is it? Yes, then the Holy Spirit will add to the wisdom that he's already given to you or knowledge that he's already been bringing you in. And then your life will become fruitful. See, praise God. So, so I said, that's not the first time that a star like that was showing up. For they were convinced that this star is, is showing that a king has been born. So let's try, let's follow the star to know. And then the star led them to, to Jerusalem and led them to Nazareth. And you, you know the story. They got to the king and they told the king, Oh, look, look, a king has been born in your territory. He said, really? Where? He said, we don't know, but we saw the star. We just came, which is normal. They were strangers. They came into the, a new town. They had to go pay courtesy call to the king. So the king will give them entrance into his town. And that's how it's done then and even till this day. Okay, so now they, they of course, you know the story. They found Jesus and they brought all their gifts to him. Now these men were not directed by the Holy Ghost. The Bible said after they had seen Jesus and they were to go back to tell the king because the king had said, look, go find him. When you find him, come and tell me so that me too, I'll go worship him. So they were going to fulfill that. If that's when they received a warning by an angel in a dream. So you see, they were not led by an angel in a dream to where Jesus was. But after they had seen Jesus following the stars, an angel had to warn them, say, don't go back that same way. Go back another way. Men have found some things. I'm telling you the truth. Men have found some things. But it's time for God's children to come into the real truth and begin to bring the accurate meaning of these things. And that star that appeared when Jesus was born didn't appear. I want you to understand. That star didn't appear because Jesus was born. So, ah, Jesus is born, so star, show up. No, the star is the, was the timing that God had placed before even the world began. God had placed the timing of that star to comfort in the day that Jesus would be born. So, the arising, the, the appearing of the star and the season for Jesus to be born coincided. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, it's the same way God had created all things and put time to them. That's why one of the things that Satan attacks the most in your life is your time. Because he knows if he can tamper with your timing, you would miss your star. Oh, I say, oh, but what are you talking about? You're talking about stars, praise God. I'm telling you the truth. The things you ought to do in your life, God has already put the timing of it. And the time is, the time is, is in the slides, in the stars. Now, when I say stars, not just the nine stars, okay? But even, they'll tell you that even the sun is a star. So I, I used that to generalize all the lights, okay? So the timing of your life has already been put up there. Everything you ought to be, everything you ought to achieve is, is put up there. The stars, the lights, they carry it. So Satan, knowing this, will fight to the nail to make you miss your timing. And he does that by bringing distractions into your life, by bringing procrastinations into your life. Oh, some of you don't understand the warfare that we, we fight as a people on the earth. The warfare we fight as... Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Oh. Even in our nation... Oh, I don't have time to share this now. Maybe I'll share it tomorrow. To share with you how how deep certain physical things we see on earth they are with it, but we don't understand it. But I want you to understand this today. The timing of everything in your life has been placed in the stars. 
And when I say place in the stars, God placed them. And all God is waiting for is you getting into alignment with the timing. And when Jesus said the will of God be done on earth as it is written in heaven, that's exactly what he's talking about. So the heavens bear witness of what God is, has written already. Now the prayer is that here on earth, God's will will be done as it is written in heaven. And the stars bear the timing of distance. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus from today. From today. Anything that brings about procrastination in your life, I pray that, the, that you will find the strength in your heart to rise and begin to do things at the time when you're supposed to do them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break that chain of procrastination in your mind. Arise and begin to be on time in jesus name amen praise god god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye